Well, it's been a while since I've done this, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, the bicycle. I am. Uh, I'm glad that I can stand here this morning and uh, teach and read the scripture. I may not. Yeah. I may not be able to uh, explain a whole lot of it, but uh, uh, we have the Holy Spirit dwelling within us, and uh, He'll help. Uh, Amen. Praise the Lord. He'll help. We're going to try to study some this morning in the book of Matthew in the fifth chapter. In verse, verse one of chapter five, talking about the Sermon on the Mount, uh, and they call it the Beatitudes that Jesus spoke to the apostles as uh, they were there. And uh, it's quite interesting. And uh, if we take it to heart, and uh, even if we would read it after the lesson or sometime in the near future, uh, it, it, it should encourage us and guide us in the way that uh, the Lord would be pleased in us acting and doing. Amen. And so in verse 1 of the uh, chapter, it says, And seeing the multitude, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. Now notice here this morning that they, uh, that uh, he didn't have to call them or holler at them or nothing like that, but they come to him. Amen. Now, this is the only, this is it only way that we as God's people uh, or sinners can uh, get any help whatsoever is by coming to the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, giving him honor and glory and, and listening to what the Holy Spirit says to us. And so Amen. this is what happened this to them. They came to him and he opened his mouth and taught them saying, Blessed or are happy are the poor in spirit. Amen. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now this is an encouraging. This is an encouraging uh, uh, verse right here because we, as God's people, are happy. We're blessed. And listen, if you're not happy, uh, you're sad. If you're mm -hmm. sad, well, you can get happy. But. Uh, it's it's a thing this morning that we need to be happy in the Lord, and we need to look forward to each day as we as we try to wake up and uh, get out and do the things that we need to do, and and praise the Lord by studying His Word and coming to church. We ought to be happy Amen. in the Lord. So He says, "Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven." And here's the greatest thing of all. To be happy about is when you're saved is that the, yours is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And that's that is for certain. It's 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 no uh, it's no halfway promise, but it's it's a solid solid as rock can get, mm -hmm. and it's this that, that Jesus Christ promises us that if we uh, serve Him and are saved that we will inherit the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. And so he said here, uh, this uh, this thing here of, of uh, being happy is opposite of being proud. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, uh, you, you, so many people this day and time, they go to church and they're Christians, but they're so proud. Mm -hmm. uh, and they they don't want to, uh, as the the scripture here is telling us about, be meek. Mm -hmm. They want to be, hey, I'm I'm Big John, and I can do this because I know the Lord. That's not the right attitude. Mm -hmm. this, this lesson is talking about. Because listen, here he says, "Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted." Mm -hmm. Now, so. We can, we can say that we can be in a blessed or, a, or, a, or have a poor spirit and mourn, but yet that means we're closer to, close to the Lord because that we need to be in that condition to serve the Lord. We need to be humble and, and serve the Lord 
this way through our humbleness and, and poorness, if you would, and not this proud and, and haughty spirit that some kind of people get. And, you know, the devil, if he can, he'll trick us into having one of those and, and exalting ourselves and saying, hey, I did this and I did that and I'm, I'm this and I'm that. But listen, he says, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Mm. Now, uh, I want to read something to you this morning in the book of Revelations concerning this blessed are the meek. In verse uh, uh, 12, chapter 21 and verse 4. In chapter 21 and verse 4 of the book of Revelations, it says, And God shall wipe away all tears Amen. from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away now this Amen. thing here that he was talking about uh, sometimes encounters these things the tears sorrows and the crying and the pain and all of this when we serve him because uh, he's, he's saying this morning here in verse 4 blessed are they that mourn and so a lot of times we we do more, and a lot of times we uh, uh, sometimes get to even feeling sorry for ourselves. But listen, uh, there's a, there's going to be a day come when all of this is going to be passed away. Amen. And this this here is what God says and Jesus says to us that we are we're happy. We should be happy uh, in this in this condition because. Listen, we're not, we're not as uh, I, saw, I talked about a little not boastful, we're not proud of uh, and, and put ourselves above everybody else. But now we'll read later on where that we need to turn the other cheek. And we need to be uh, helpers to others. And so this, this will help us to understand sometimes when we have hard times, when, when, when everything is not going well with us, uh, we get to feeling sorry for ourselves. But listen, God knows. Amen. Jesus knows. The Holy Spirit knows what's going on in your in your body and in your mind. And listen, uh, if you'll just if you'll just be patient, mm -hmm. if you'll be patient, these things will pass. These things will strengthen you. These things will make you to remember that years and years later and say, well, he carried me over that one and he's going to carry me over this one and he's mm -hmm. going to help me with this one. See, so that's, this is important this morning to realize what the uh, meek and poor or mournful, uh, what it can help you with. Mm -hmm. Because so many people don't realize uh, 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 he's out there uh, mourning around and crying around and he's, he's sad and he's all this. Well, listen, there comes times in everybody's life when this happens. Mm -hmm. But the thing of it is, remember, when you have your little time with it, that Jesus knows what's going on. Mm -hmm. And he's going to strengthen you in this. And he's going to help you in this. And so uh, just, just, kind of, just kind of say, thank you, Lord. And, you know, sometimes we, we need to thank the Lord when uh, trouble do come because he, uh, he's not forsaken us. He has. But uh, sometimes we need a little testing, you know, and, and uh, uh, encourage us in patience. So in verse 5, here he says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Mm -hmm. And uh, we... We see that the meek are uh, uh, very humble people, and uh, you know sometimes we we see people that are more humble than others, mm -hmm. and uh, you say that's that's the bit about the meekest person, the easiest going person I've ever seen. Well, listen, uh, they're blessed, they're mm -hmm. happy because they are in that condition, and so he says here they shall inherit the kingdom or the earth. Blessed are they, in verse 6, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Now, again, uh, these things that he is explaining to the disciples about being happy in, notice that 
which do hunger and thirst, not after a piece of cornbread, mm -hmm. but after the righteousness of God. And so uh, that is that is our that is our food and our drink this morning is to be hungry for the blessings of God and to come be be uh, study in His Bible, study the Bible as as often as we can, and that's where the feast comes from. Mm -hmm. And He will be with you and talk to you and tell you about uh, what's going on with you. But He says here. Uh, in this, in this uh, uh, thirst after righteousness, he gives us a promise, for they shall be filled. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, again, these things that are, that he's talking about to the disciples here, he's encouraging them because he knows what's going to happen to them. He knows after his departure that many, many things, and, and they're going to be killed, and they're going to uh, have all kinds of, uh, imprisonment. I, I think of Paul. Uh, a lot of the times he wasn't one of the apostles, but Paul, what all he went through. And I was, mm -hmm. was studying the other day about Paul, and uh, when he was at Rome, and they put him in this in this little cellar, like, right. and it was just a, a hole big enough for him to get in. And uh, they said that uh, some of the garbage from the city run through there. And uh, and he had all this to to put up with, but you know what? <laughs> Paul Paul was a, Paul stood. He met. Paul was, Paul was fine. So I, you know, blessed are the merciful, for they shall see, for they shall obtain mercy. Mm -hmm. And so mercy is goes along to me with. Uh, uh, doing good deeds to other people and 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 uh, and trying to help them and encourage them and and so many times we see somebody that's in need of something or another maybe we can encourage them and be merciful to them and and we we need mercy too and we need mercy from our our Father which is in heaven because He's the one that really gives out mercy mm -hmm. and so this morning. Remember this when you say, when you see someone that needs some help, be merciful, mm -hmm. be kind. And uh, this is sometimes the things that we often kind of push to the side and say, well, he's got what he needs or he's, he's just begging to buy some beer or something like that. Listen, you don't know that. Amen. And uh, the thing of it is, if it's, it's not in your corner to to judge that man and say, well, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna help him because I know what he's gonna do with the money. Well, listen, he might have some children at home that's hungry. He, mm -hmm. he might be hungry himself or whatever. But here, just, in, just encourage others by being merciful. Mm -hmm. if, not, if nothing else, you can say, I'll pray for you. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, you know. Uh, and, and a lot of times they don't understand it, but that's the best gift that they can get this morning mm -hmm. is if you're able to pray for someone that's uh, sick or that's downhearted or, or whatever his, his case is, if you can pray for him and, and encourage him with that, that's the best thing that he can have. Amen. So he says in verse 8, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And he, he is saying happy again, using, he uses blessing, but, but happy. And this morning, if we cannot be happy because we know for a fact that when we lay down and, and give up this old flesh and move out, listen, we're going to see God. Amen. We should, we should remember, we should remember that and be happy about it because uh, and that'll make these other things that are uh, hindering you and are, are causing you to stumble a little bit, that'll make that easier to get through. You, you, can, you, can, you can say thank you, Lord, for uh, encouraging me. And the Holy Spirit has great parts in this, too, because He will come to you, which He, he is, and He will come to you. And he'll encourage you, and he'll Amen. speak to you also. So uh, I, I, I feel like that I have understood more about the Holy Spirit in the last few years than I ever did. Amen. 
he is he is my encouragement when all things are going wrong and everything. He'll come to me, and and, and it may not be in a flash, but you know, maybe later on, you may be about halfway crying, and he'll come to you and say, "We'll take you." Amen. So he says in verse nine, "Blessed are the peacemakers." For they shall be called the children of God. And these uh, peacemakers are those that are just, uh, they're not lawmen, but right. the peacemakers are those that uh, will try to uh, help one another to see, uh, even this morning, to, to not, we'll, we'll see how that people sometimes bite and fight and, and mm -hmm. each other. Listen, if you can, if you can be a, a, a friend to someone and say, "Hey, uh, you must understand uh, the flesh," because this, these, the peacemakers uh, can can tell tell you uh, things that's going on in the flesh. Now, a lot of people don't understand what the flesh is all about and how right. it thinks and and how it does, but to, uh, when they crash like that, uh, it, they need some help. And so this morning, and this is what I think he's made me talking about this morning about the peacemakers, and uh, he says, for they shall be called the children of God. And that, this morning, is a wonderful blessing. That Amen. That we can do these things, and uh, and so uh, as I as told you first, we we need to think upon all of these things as we go through our days, and, and I thought it was so refreshing for me uh, when I was trying to study and get a lesson, and I read these, and I said, well, hey, let's bless my soul, Amen. because uh, it's something that we need to keep fresh on our minds because. Satan is out there, and Satan is ready to cause you to do uh, things that you shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's going to put something in your mind about this and about that, and so uh, this is good. And then he says here in verse 10, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. So again here... Uh, if you're persecuted, if you're uh, uh, spit on or whatever, as Jesus was, uh, you to take 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 peace in it because that's something that uh, Jesus has promised to us mm -hmm. that uh, that uh, we can. Uh, when we're persecuted, that we'll come, uh, we'll come out on that better end. And we all we need to do is just hold our peace and uh, be 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 happy with things that are. Be patient because listen, Jesus tells us this this morning that that when we're, when we're persecuted, uh, we need to be uh, at ease. And He says in verse eleven, "Blessed are." Ye, when men shall revile you and persecute you and say in all manner of evil against you falsely and for my sake. And uh, that's one of the biggest things I, I believe today is people criticizing. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll criticize you because you go to church. They'll criticize you because you tithe. They'll criticize you because that you uh, give thanks for your food, they'll mm -hmm. criticize you. But the thing of it is, that's no reason for us to get discouraged because we know that it's in the will of the Lord. And when one, one persecutes you and criticizes you like that, just think this morning and pray for them. Mm -hmm. Because that's, that's what you need to do. You don't need to say, well, I'll... Uh, I'll get him back to saying things to me or doing things to me. No, just pray for him, and uh, he'll be more happy. Uh, Amen. Than he will be for criticizing because uh, when you criticize, that gives the devil food to, to encourage you to do more. So here, here we go again. In verse, verse 12, it says, Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in Amen. 
So here it all sums it up. If you do what we've been trying to talk to you about or read to you about this morning, he says, great is your reward in heaven. Now that's not saying that you're going to go to heaven because you know if you're saved, you're going to go to heaven. Right. But you don't know how many rewards you're going to get. But he says, here, great is your rewards when you mm -hmm. get there. And so that's something else to look forward to. And hey, we have no inkling of what rewards he's talking about, but we know this, that what he's talking about has got to be so great that we just can understand it. Right. But that's, that's an important thing this morning is to remember. Here he says, great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which, are, which were before you. And so he goes on this morning and encourages them by telling them they are the salt of the earth. But I want to read to you something else here in Matthew 5.38. You will just turn right over to 5.38. Let's see if we can find it. He says here, Ye have heard, in verse uh, 38 of chapter 5, Ye have heard that it hath been said, An eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. Now this was some of the stuff that they used over in the Old Testament, I think. You can find it over in Exodus 21. But here, this is what he's saying. This was for getting back. Mm -hmm. This this thing, that's what it was, that's all it was for. And they used this uh, in the Old Testament to some for, but I, I read a little bit about it, but, but it's an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Like if, if he hits you or if he says something to you ugly, hey, I'll say something but ugly back to him. Mm -hmm. Or uh, if, if he knocked out my tooth, I'm gonna knock out his tooth in, in some other ways. And so you do something bad back to him because he done something bad to you. And that makes makes you the old flesh even. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the problem. You don't get even that way. But you take it and you pray for it. Mm -hmm. And so here it says here in verse 39, but I say to you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. Amen. So this that's the proper way. That's the proper way to cure an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And he says here, uh, and if any man will sue you thee at the ball and take away thy cloak, coat, let him have thy cloak also. Amen. And the cloak, I think, was more important. I was trying to study it a little bit. It was not under, it was an overgarment, but it was the, the cloak was, and it was more expensive. Uh, 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 I, I, so he says, here, uh, and take away the coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall commit, compel me to go a mile, go with him twain. Amen. And uh, I found a little place there for that in the Roman times, uh, if, a, if a, a guy had a heavy armor on and he was carrying it, he was compelled the man to, to carry it for him a mile. And this is where this comes from. Mm -hmm. So, and, and whosoever shall compel, compel me to go a mile, go with him to two miles. And so you see, you see, uh, that's that's doing more than he asked. Amen. And, and, and you know, it wasn't it wasn't a nice thing for the the man to do that, uh, asking him to carry his armor because he ought to be able to wear his armor or carry his armor himself. But uh, that's, that's what this is all about here, uh, doing more than what they ask. And so here he says in verse 42, give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of, he, of thee, turn, that, turn not thou away. Now this is, this is, this is, this is getting right down to the, uh, the desire of the flesh completely because it's borrowing money. Mm -hmm. And he says here, give to him that asked thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. 
and here uh, he says, Ye have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Amen. Pray to them which despitefully use you and persecute you. And so this thing here with uh, in verse 40, uh, verse 42 about the the money give to him that asks thee and from him that would borrow. Uh, I, I was thinking about that. You know, uh, we we would uh, we would probably do a lot of things for some people and not think too much about it. But when they when they ask you if they could borrow money and you know they ain't got it back, won't we'll pay you back and they beat you before. Listen, that's 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 getting to the old flesh and, and the flesh the, the flesh is gonna hear it. Right. I, I mean that's that, that's one of their prized possessions is is wealth. And and so uh, remember this these things that we are reading here this morning, how that you can uh, uh, be more uh, uh, fruitful, right? By doing these things, and and here uh, he says also in verse four three, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. You bet. That's what that's what you have heard. But he says, I say unto you, love your enemy. Bless them that curse you, and that's 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 one that's another one that's hard to do is to uh, bless them, and you know you know people that's tried to hurt you or or they talked about you and they just don't like you. Period. Well, the best thing for you to do is pray for them. Mm -hmm. I mean, hey, you may not stop them from being angry with you and, and being mean to you. But the thing of it is, your job is to clear your conscience, mm -hmm. not not what he says, is to pray for them. That's that's the thing mm -hmm. this morning we need to understand is we need to pray for our enemies. Mm -hmm. And so here he says here, and do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully, despitefully use you and persecute you. Okay that ye may be the children of your Father, which is in heaven, for he made his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and send rain on the just and on the unjust. And this this here, what was written in 44, the song just come to me this morning, love and your enemy. We have to remember this when, we, when we're over this problem. Jesus Christ did the most thing for us that we were his enemy mm -hmm. and he hung on the cross of Calvary and died that that I might be saved. Mm -hmm. And that may help your enemy if you just forgive him. And, and you can tell him, I, hey, I forgive you. And it might act on him in such a way that he might be saved. Mm -hmm. And so that, I mean, it's, 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 it's the only way to go if you'll just uh, just pray about it and, and, and give it a little thought because that's the easy way out. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't say that you, I'm going to slip up behind him and knock him in the head because he did this. That's not the way. Amen. That's not the way. But you pray for him and you can, you can pray in silence and you can be at peace and, and that's the way to get through these problems here. And so he says here, in verse 45, that ye may be the children of your Father, which is in heaven, for he maketh the sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and send, sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Mm -hmm. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have you? Well, you don't have no reward because they love you. Right. That's, their, that's your reward. They love you. But he says here, do ye not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Mm -hmm. Do not even the publicans so. So this is some of the things that uh, that uh, we could could help help us 
from day to day. Uh, I want to read one other thing here this morning. I believe I got it in Luke 6. I want to read to you. In verse Luke 6 and verse 20. Luke 6, verse 20. He and he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Amen. Blessed are ye that not at hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil. For the Son of Man's sake, you know. rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy. That's the that's the healing. That's the cure to your problem. He says, "For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the right manner did their fathers unto the prophets." You know. But woe unto you that are rich. For ye have received your consolation. Mm -hmm. Remember about the bar? Woe unto you that are full, for your, you shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Now these are the ones uh, that are lost. And he says, Woe unto you all men, woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got one other thing I wanted to read to you in Psalms 1 1, and I'll be through. Psalms 1 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, mm -hmm. nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor setteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the river of water that bringeth forth his fruit in this his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. And then it goes on to tell about the ungodly, mm -hmm. and they he explains. He, he uh, says to, that they are like the chaff of the wind and, 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 uh, and drives them away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Yeah, right. That's our lesson this morning, and I hope that uh, something will be said and uh, read. That will be a blessing to you and uh, uh, pray for one another and uh, try to remember some of these verses that we've read because uh, it'll help you, it'll get you, through, it'll get you through the rough times and it'll solve a whole lot of your problems that you'll carry on your shoulders uh, sometimes too. Thank y'all. Amen.